Hey everyone, it's Nicole here from Fake Toujours and today we're going to start a series on how to use up all those extra egg yolks. If you're an avid macaron baker like I am, you probably have a good amount of egg yolk waste. Well, instead of throwing those all away, we're gonna go through a series of recipes that you can use up those yolks with. And we're gonna start with a French classic, the cannelé. Okay, so let's get started on what a cannelé is. It is very popular in France, traditionally in Bordeaux, and if you can hear this, it has this really crunchy exterior from high heat that we'll be baking these at, and then a really wonderful custardy center, sort of like a bread pudding center. Cannelés are great paired with your coffee in the morning, in the afternoon or evening. There's really no bad time for a cannelé. They're not extremely sweet, so I feel like I crave them all day long. <laughs> they are a wonderful snack no matter what time of the day. There are a lot of different ways to flavor these, but today we'll be going over the traditional way of vanilla and rum. In this recipe, I have rum extract because we don't keep hard alcohol in our house. However, I think it would really be amazing with actual rum and I will tell you how much to use while we go through the recipe. So when you're making these cannelés, a few things that we should note. They are traditionally made in these copper tins that are shaped like this and they have a divot in the middle and you usually do a mixture of 50% beeswax to 50% butter. You mix them and melt them and then you coat the inside and that's what really creates this shiny wax-like exterior and that crunch and they are very expensive. So my whole goal with this video was to use up our yolks and do it cost efficiently and without being too intimidating. So I chose to not go the traditional route of the copper and I got the chef made tin. It's carbon steel and it's super heavy duty. So let's get started on making those cannelés just as well as the French patisseries but with our home equipment. So we're gonna take out your milk from the refrigerator. Scale 490 grams into a pot and bring to a simmer. You can take out a beautiful vanilla bean. You can use Madagascar, bourbon, whatever vanilla bean, Tahitian you want or have on hand. I tried using vanilla paste and it tastes great, but especially because I'm skimping on real rum, the real vanilla beans add so much to this. So I splurged and I got this $10 vanilla bean. So you're gonna slice it open long wise. You're gonna scrape out the seeds with the dull end of your blade. So once your milk's at a simmer, add your seeds and the vanilla pod into your milk, turn off the heat. At about the five minute mark of infusing your vanilla into your milk, you can add 50 grams of butter into your milk mixture and just to let it melt. While you're letting the infusion take place, you can go ahead and get your yolks out of the fridge. Or if you're not making macarons on the daily, you can crack your eggs, separate your egg whites from your yolks and use three yolks and one whole egg for this recipe. You're also gonna need 240 grams of sugar. Mix that with 25 grams of cornstarch Thoroughly mix that together and then pour that sugar cornstarch mixture into your eggs and egg yolks. Stir that up till it's nice and homogenous. Right about that time, your milk mixture has probably been, been infused for 10 minutes. Take out the vanilla pod and save it. And then you're just going to pour about a quarter of your milk mixture into your egg and sugar mixture. Whisk thoroughly to get it nice and loosened up. And then you're just gonna slowly add about a third of your milk mixture at a time. When you have only one third of your milk mixture left, 
go ahead and add 100 grams of all-purpose flour into your egg and milk mixture. Mix that in and help mix it in by adding your last third of milk into your egg mixture. So pour that rest of the milk in, add your teaspoon of rum extract, or if you're using real rum, which will taste super yummy, you can add 30 grams of rum into your mixture. Stir all of this up, all the ingredients. I like to also add a pinch of salt. And once everything is homogenous, I like to pour it into a big Pyrex that has a spout on it so it's easy to pour into my molds the next day. We're gonna let this sit for 24 to 48 hours, which is imperative when you make cannelé. You wanna let your batter rest. It not only infuses the flavors more, but it's gonna help hydrate your gluten and make it so your cannelé turn out beautifully. At this point, you can put your vanilla pod back into your cannelé batter, put a top on, and store that in the fridge for your 24 to 48 hours. Because we're cooking these cannelé at super high heats, I like to clarify my butter before I brush my molds with them. So typically, if you remember, cannelé are baked with a beeswax and butter mixture, but I chose to go the route of just butter to be easier on us. And because the molds that we have are super painful to coat with beeswax. So when we clarify our butter, we're going to get rid of our milk solids so that our butter has a higher burning point and so it's not gonna burn our cannelé and have a super bitter aftertaste. So I recommend that extra step. It's really simple to clarify your butter. You just take a stick of butter, 113 grams of butter. You're gonna melt it at really low heat on your stove top. Once it's completely melted, make sure it doesn't come to a boil. Once it's completely melted, you're gonna just skim off that top, all the milk solids, and you're left with milk fat. Use that, cool it down, and you're gonna use that as your clarified butter. You can also buy clarified butter at the store or ghee. So if you don't wanna take that extra step, those are at the supermarket. On your bake day, you've let your batter mature for 24 to 48 hours. You're gonna preheat your oven to 475 degrees. While your oven is preheating, get your tin out and you're gonna do a nice light coating of butter, your clarified butter, all throughout with a pastry brush. I like to melt my clarified butter about 70%, mix it up, and then it's at this perfect pliable, brushable texture that you can just brush your molds with easily. So once your molds have all been coated with your clarified butter, it's time to bake. Get your cannelé batter out of the refrigerator, give it a nice whisk to emulsify it and make it all homogenous once more. And then you're gonna pour 70 grams of your batter in each tin. I just put my entire chef-made molds on top of a scale and I pour 70 grams in each, in each hole. I tried 75 and that works anywhere between 70 to 75. However, I feel like 75 was a bit much and I got them to, the cannelé rose a little bit too high out of the molds. 70 was the magic number for me. So once your tin is full of 70 gram increments of your batter into each little pocket of goodness, you're going to bake. Bake 475 for 12 minutes, then without opening your oven, reduce the temperature down to 375 for 50 to 55 more minutes. Once you have only 30 minutes left on your timer, I like to flip my whole tray 180 degrees to get an even bake in my, con my standard oven. And then after that, you get these beautiful cannelé with that hard crisp shell. Right when they come out of the oven, they will not be hard. You have to let them cool and then you will develop that crust. So don't think you did it wrong when they're all soft and soggy when you take them out. 
let them cool on a rack, and you'll be so surprised at how hard they get. Once you have them out of the oven, let them cool for about two hours and enjoy. These are meant to be eaten day of baking, but I was able to wrap mine up in plastic wrap and freeze, and then when we wanted a treat, we just reheated them. I popped them into these molds while frozen, and put them in a 500 degree oven for about seven minutes and it redeveloped that skin and crunch after cooling. So you can freeze these and have them in your freezer for your enjoyment at a later time. These are suggested to enjoy warm and fresh. However, I enjoy them cold too. I'm, I'm a big cold custard fan. So um, really try them at every single stage and just eat them. The first time I made this, I used orange blossom water. So instead, instead of that one teaspoon of rum extract, I swapped it out for one teaspoon of orange blossom water and that's a really yummy flavor as well if you don't wanna go the rum route. This recipe yields about 13 cannoli. So you could try separating your batter into two bakes and do six and seven. I have only done full trays because I've been very anxious to bake them all. So you can do a full tray. Just know that the two center cannoli will probably have to go back in the oven because they get less heat distribution. So about 10 more minutes I had to bake those in the very middle of the tin. Other than that, that's your cantaloupe. These are typically so dark, they look almost burnt, but they just are so delicious and nutritious for your soul. Do you hear that crunch? They're so good. I hope you guys do these at your home. I will put a link in my description for the chef made tins if you're interested. Otherwise, you can splurge and do the copper tins if you'd like. And that completes our first recipe on how to use up those extra yolks lying around in your home. If you make this recipe or if you have further questions, please comment down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for tuning in, you guys. Happy baking and happy cannelle making. Cannelle.